Hello, welcome to this new video. My name is Martina Vincenzi and I am the founder of the VIP Flight Attendant Academy Private Jet Coach. On today's video, I would like to look with you very much more into details about the welcoming service. So I'm sure that many of you, um, when I say welcoming service, will just think about that little piece of something to eat and that little glass of something to drink that we normally arrange uh, on the credenza or on a table of the private jet prior to the boarding. So when the customers comes on board, they can find something to eat or to drink. However, the welcoming service is not only that, okay? Welcoming service is something that goes more uh, 360 degrees around the full VIP uh, experience, the VIP travel experience. For example, part of the welcoming service is to check the cleanliness of your cabin. Is your cabin absolutely clean and immaculate? Did you check it? Have you, have you gone through everything? Did you check if the flash of the toilet is working? Did you check that uh, there is water coming out from uh, the sink, from the tap in the lavatory and in the galley? Um, you know, sometimes when I, when I board the jet, something that I do um, is to open the tab and let the air flowing out until the water comes. So because the first... Uh, um, probably I would say 15, 20 seconds uh, when you open the tab, uh, after the, the, the water tank has been refilled, um, there is a lot of air coming out and the water is a kind of a spraying everywhere. So in order to avoid this uh, inconvenience to my customer, I do that myself prior to boarding so that I will make sure that when they actually um, go and use the lavatory, they can experience uh, a nice clean lavatory where everything is working uh, properly and upon their expectations. Uh, another question, did you, uh, did you check and did you prepare the cabin according to your customers? For example, are you traveling with children? So did you arrange a part of the cabin uh, for them? For example, I normally take the aft of the cabin, uh, the divan in particular, a lot of children, they are just uh, uh, so interested about the divan. So they normally go there by themselves. And I have decided that the aft cabin can be dedicated to children in case I'm flying with them. So what do I do is uh, uh, I try to create a space, um, you know, ready for children. So childproof, that there is nothing dangerous that can be broken or that can hurt them. Um, of course, I will have prepared some toys, some surprises for them. So I will uh, bring the toys uh, over there and uh, maybe some snacks. If it is the case, uh, you know, when you travel, when you have families on board the private jet, very often they actually travel with nannies. So in that case, uh, the nanny will be the one, the most caregiver uh, to the children. However, if the nanny is not present, I, uh, I want to make sure that the children are having, are having an enjoyable flight and also that they, they do not disturb the parents, um, you know, too much. So that also the parents can actually detach from them a little bit and have uh, uh, a nice time on board. That doesn't mean that you have to become a nanny, obviously. It's just to have, you know, that little, um, that little look on how they are doing in case the nanny is not present, obviously. Um, another question, are you flying with pets? So did you arrange the cabin ready for the pets? Um, you know, if you're if you're flying, for example, with dogs, so dogs are definitely the pet number one on a private jet. So did you arrange like a space in the cabin for them with everything they need, like an absorbing mat uh, in case they need uh, uh, to use the toilet, a bowl of water? Uh, maybe have you have you checked uh, if if you can find an information about uh, uh, the pets nutrition uh, um, requirements, if they have like a specific brand, uh, if there are some treats that you can buy uh, for them. And uh, also, why not maybe a little present, uh, you know, it can be just a, a squishy toy for the for the for the dog, uh, or, or something else, or maybe a, a collar or something like that, that it doesn't have to be expensive at all. But it's just a way, you know, to uh, just to go that little bit extra mile for your customers. 
Um, another thing that is quite important when you, when you are preparing your welcoming service um, is to, you know, to prepare yourself. So to be there with a smile, okay? To be there um, not with that attitude that you are lucky that I'm here today because I wish I, were every, uh, I wish I was everywhere else but here. So to be there and actually be happy, like be genuine, that's, uh, that's definitely very important. Last but not least, uh, remember that on board a private jet you are a host, but you are also a guide. So you have to guide them on the activities that we're going to do. So normally after boarding, when they come on board, um, if they are like a little bit lost and they don't really know what to do and they are just uh, taking their time or maybe they are on the phone or maybe uh, they are, you know, just uh, just uh, losing time looking around. And we know that in aviation, we don't really have much time to lose, right? We have, uh, we have a slot to respect. We have uh, some situation that we cannot really uh, stay there and look around for too long. So maybe I promptly suggest uh, on the activity, can I take your jacket? So I guide them on what is going to happen next, okay? I prepare, for example, the Oshibori, the hot towels that we offer uh, normally on boarding, and I just go into the cabin and show that to them and ask them, just, just you know, with a look, you don't really have to talk all the time, and just ask them if they, are, uh, if they would like to try one. So in this way, I just uh, simply guide them through all the activities. You, you can be, you know, proactive, you can be the one leading uh, in this type of situation because you are the host and the guide uh, for your customers on board. And then, of course, we will have also uh, some snacks to eat and something to drink that, you know, this is, um, this is working like on the very um, basic needs and basic, uh, a very basic level, uh, primitive, I would say, uh, the primitive needs of every human being or every, everything that is alive, actually, uh, in order to stay alive, you need to have oxygen, you need to have a shelter, you need to have water, you need to have food. Fine, that's perfect. So oxygen, we do have a shelter. The jet is a perfect shelter. One of my favorites, actually. And then I provide to you some food and some water. Um, so this is like the ultimate welcoming ex experience. I want you to be, uh, to be well and to stay alive. So I provide you the basic needs that you need uh, by giving you this ambiance, which is clean, uh, which is uh, prepared for you, ready for you. And you can find also some food and some water. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be water, obviously. Uh, I have to say I extremely rarely provide an alcoholic drink at boarding unless I am 100% sure that they are going to drink it. Um, or if I are, if I am requested with it, obviously. Um, otherwise, uh, it could be, you know, it really depends on the time of the day. So if it is a morning or even an afternoon, I might go for a smoothie or for a fresh juice. Uh, if it is like before lunch or um, before dinner, maybe I can offer an aperitivo that it can be also a non-alcoholic drink uh, or maybe a soda, just a simple uh, Coke or, or something similar. Um, so it would be uh, eventually one of those or I, if I really have uh, one or two or even three customers, I just ask them their preferences and I just prepare what they, what they tell me. Uh, regarding the food, what kind of food can you possibly offer on a welcoming table? Uh, in this case, it would be something finger food, okay? Something that they can eat in just one bite, that they do not need any cutlery or any equipment or whatsoever. So uh, again, it depends on the time of the day. If it is morning, I normally go with some uh, mini croissant that they can just grab one and eat it. Fruits, like a, a bowl of berries, for example, a nicely presented strawberries, why not? Uh, that it makes, uh, you know, it makes healthy, it makes uh, looking elegant. If it is uh, uh, any other moment of the day, I actually go with the savory. So uh, normally, most of the time, it's just canapé. 
um, maybe some caviar canapé, salmon canapé, um, maybe some mini sandwiches even, uh, you know, if it is like that, that moment of the day that they, you don't really know if they had lunch already or if they're coming on board being super hungry. So maybe you can, uh, you can propose some sandwiches that are a little bit more fulfilling than a canapé and that they can, uh, uh, they can have some, some of them, some finger sandwiches, okay? Um, and then uh, if you are flying in the afternoon, I'm gonna go again with something sweet. So if my service is an afternoon tea, then uh, I will probably offer some petit four, uh, some macarons, uh, uh, or maybe a nicely presented cake, if this is part of my catering. So as you can see, you can really be creative and offer a different thing uh, according to the time of the day and also the type of the flight. Well, I hope that this video can clarify a little bit more that the welcoming service is not only about uh, offering something to eat and something to drink, but it's something more, uh, you know, uh, going very much all around you, in particular with the cleanliness and the preparation of the cabin for that flight, uh, for the type of customers you have. Uh, as always, if you have any question regarding the business aviation industry or the flight attendant life, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, that's all for today, so ciao for now and baci baci!